Hey everyone, this is Jonathan here from Unity Game Programming for Beginners, Wild Cockatiel Games. And this is actually more of an intermediate level tutorial, but what I want to do is show you a simple way that you can prevent items from spawning on top of each other. So let's just take a look at an example first in this game I've been working on called the Portal Ball. So when how this is going to go is I have these two balls here, and whenever they collide with each other, or with an asteroid, which will be appearing in a few seconds, a gem spawns nearby. Now, the issue that I was having was that gems also get destroyed when they touch asteroids, so it was kind of disheartening if the gem spawns and just gets destroyed right away. So I want to make it when the balls hit those asteroids, like they are there, the gems are spawning not on top of the asteroids, or on top of other balls. And so I was able to come up with something that seems to work pretty well. It, it definitely seems to stop the gems from spawning on top of other game objects, most if not all of the time. So let's go take a look at a simpler project and how we can actually make this work. Okay, so here's a much simpler project. And if we test this out, when we hit this spawn ball button, it makes a ball spawn randomly, but it could spawn anywhere, including on top of these boxes. And that's exactly what we don't want to happen. So let's aim for getting these balls to spawn anywhere but on top of the bo boxes. So if we take a look at the code here that I have already for this, this is what exists, but this is just for spawning a ball. It doesn't do anything else. So to solve this problem, we're going to use something called uh, circle overlap all. And I'll explain what that is right now. So to start off with, I'm going to declare a public collider 2D. And I'm just going to call this colliders. Now I'm also going to make a public float called radius. And in I'm going to write avoid update method. And in this, we're going to say colliders is equal to physics 2D. And mind you, this is a 2D project I'm working on, obviously. So if you were working on a 3D project, uh, you'd be using a collider, not a collider 2D, and physics, not physics 2D. And we're going to say physics 2D dot, uh, what was it, circle, overlap circle all. And if we open brackets, it's going to ask for a vector 2 point where this game object exists and a radius. So for the point, I'm just going to type transform.position because this is attached to the gameplay manager, which is at 0, 0 in the scene. And we're going to pass through the radius. If I can spell it correctly. There we go. Now, hitting save, let's go take a look at the project and see what this actually does. So if I hit play, well, if I solve my errors first here, uh, oh, because I did not declare it as an array. There we go. So this has to actually be an array or else it will not work. And so if we hit play now, we're going to see that, that it's publicly declared here and it has a size of zero. Now as I expand this radius, watch what's going to happen. All of a sudden, it gets the collider of the box, the first box it hits. And if I just keep expanding this radius, it adds all of the boxes to this array. So that's really cool because uh, I've made the radius well, it looks like, you know, up to 11, I, I get all the boxes in here. Now, we have something that's usable. Now, I don't want to be calling this from my update function. You could, but for this example, I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a new method. And I have this spawn position here. So what I'm going to say is uh, bool. Actually, I want to declare the bool elsewhere. Bool can spawn here. Now I'm going to say can spawn here equals a method I haven't written yet called randomize, nope, prevent spawn overlap. And we're going to pass through this spawn position. And now we're going to actually write this method. So we're going to not call this update, but we're going to call this prevent spawn overlap and it's going to take in a vector 3 spawn position. Now inside of this what I basically want to do is write a for loop. So I'm going to say for int i equals 0. i is less than colliders dot length i plus plus. And what I want to do is essentially check the bounds of each of these colliders and return false if 
the sp intended spawn position is falls within the bounds of these colliders. So to do this, I'm going to write vector 3 center point is equal to colliders at point i dot bounds dot center. Float width is equal to colliders at position i dot bounds dot extents dot x. Float height, almost the same thing. Colliders at position i dot bounds dot extents dot y. They spelled, oh, spelled something wrong. Now we're going to get the extents for each of the sides. And I'm going to say float left extent is equal to center point dot x minus the width. Float right extent is equal to cent center point dot x plus the width. And the same for the lower and upper. Lower extent, center point dot y minus the height. And float upper extent is equal to center point dot y plus the height. Now we're just going to test this out in an if condition and we're going to say if our spawn position dot x is greater or equal to the left extent and the same spawn pause dot x is less than or equal to the right extent so basically, if it's falling within the left and right, and now we have to write a second if statement inside this for the y, and say spawn pause dot y is greater than or equal to lower extent, and spawn pause dot y is less than or equal to the upper extent, we are going to return false. However, if it gets past that if statement, then it is not within one of the boxes, and we can simply return true. Okay. So we have this bool here that says uh, bool can spawn here is equal to the spawn overlap. Now basically what we want to do is only s instantiate this new ball if this condition is true. So we can say here while can spawn here is false. So these to uh, criteria here, we can just cut them out and put them inside the loop. So by default, we're declaring the bool up here. It's going to be false. Um, spawn pause. Oh, so I'm actually going to declare spawn pause up here. Vector three spawn pause, and now we're going to say vector three spawn pause is equal to a random position. except that we are going to have to declare those inside the loop as well. <coughs> okay, so basically declaring it here within the loop, and now we can just say if spawn pause, or sorry, if can spawn here is true, we break the loop and we spawn the ball. However, because working in a while loop can be dangerous, uh, it could just go on for a long time if you get really bad luck. Probably not, but just to be on the safe side, I also like to build in a safety net to get ourselves out of here. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm just going to say uh, int safety net is equal to zero. And I'm just going to say if safety net is Oh, I am having syntax problems while writing here, while white while talking and coding at the same time. So if safety net is greater than, let's say, 50 attempts, we're also going to break and just log that out, saying debug dot log too many attempts. <coughs> and one more thing: increase the value of safety net every time this while loop runs. Okay, so now let's test this out and see how this works. But first of all, we're going to increase the radius of this, or else uh, it's never going to collect any colliders. Oh, cannot a blissfully convert void to bool. <coughs> oh, 
because I didn't declare it as a bool, I declared it as a void. So bool, and it looks like I had a couple other errors as well. Unity is very picky here. Ah, because I haven't declared. Well, I have to actually declare it up here. Bool, can spawn here is equal to false. Use of unassigned local variable, spawn pause. So basically, if you're declaring these values up here and then using it, you have to actually give it an initial value, which I always seem to forget to do. So just, it seems to be the same error I'm getting for every line. Okay, one more. Not all code paths return a value. Oh, because I put this inside of the loop. Let's just take this outside of the loop and ensure that it returns true by default at the end if it can get there. Okay, we good? There we go, all my errors are gone. Okay. So let's press spun ball. So you see there is a bit of overlap, but that's because of basically where I have my center point. Right now it's spawning them based on the center point and it's calculating that the center of the ball falls outside of these box limits. So that's kind of cool. Um, now as you can see it is spawning over the button. That's because uh, it does the button itself does not actually have a collider attached to it. However, it's refusing to spawn on top of any of these boxes other than uh, the edges overlapping. The center point is not. So that's actually pretty cool because that is essentially doing what we want it to do. And actually what's more, as I'm just noticing, is that it is not spawning on top of other balls either. Again, it is the center point that's not spawning on top of them, uh, but basically the balls are not spawning on top of other boxes or on top of other balls. So that is basically doing what we want. Now there's one more thing we could do here, and that's actually add a layer mask. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I type public layer mask, uh, when we're t passing this through, we can actually just write in here mask. Okay, so let's go back into Unity and take a look at what this actually does. So if you see over here under the gameplay manager, it says mask nothing. Well, if I change this to mask everything, this is basically saying we want this uh, spear, uh, bleh, the circle overlap all to take in all of the colliders. Now, if I just take off this ignore circle layer here, which I've created beforehand, and I apply that to one of the boxes, like box number four, I'll change this from layer boxes to layer ignore circle. Now watch what happens. If I hit spawn ball enough times, you're going to see it's going to cover this uh, one layer because it's being masked. So now it can actually spawn on top of this bottom right box because the bottom right box is set to uh, the ignore circle layer. So that's just a cool way you can kind of selectively choose what you want uh, the uh, circle overlap circle all to affect and not affect. Of course, you'd have to do a little bit more if you want it to affect the uh, UI objects. Basically, just make sure that everything that you want it to be catching has a, a collider attached to it. So that's pretty cool, and that's basically how we can get this to work. Like I said, if you do want the balls to not overlap at all whatsoever, you're going to have to work with more than just the center point of the ball and actually calculate the bounds of the ball too, uh, but it should be relatively simple to do that. I've shown you how to do that with the boxes already, so just kind of apply the same logic to the ball, and uh, you can get that working. Uh, again, if you're in a 3D game, you're not going to use overlap circle all, you're going to use overlap spear all. So it is slightly different in 3D, but quite similar. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you got something out of this. Please let me know if you have any questions and if you thought this was useful. Thanks very much for watching.